you know, precious few heroes when it comes to the story of the, the war in Afghanistan or just, but I would like now to highlight just one and probably the only hero. You know who I'm talking about? The last no. Jew in Afghanistan. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> this I dude fucking know. He's so dude. fucking cool. Did you okay. I don't want to I don't want to spoil it, but did you see the post that I retweeted about the guy who came to visit him? About like the the monster energy drinks on the hot plate? Yeah, this fucking guy came to visit him all the way into Afghanistan, an American Jew, and was like instantly Zabulon's like, I need twenty dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's like, like Okay, okay, here, here, here. And then he takes these monster cans and puts them on a space heater to heat them up. <laughs> Like I tea. Love, dude, he's like tea. We need he was a making monster energy tea. Dude, yeah. this guy Zabulon he's the Jewish is, pope. He's is, our pope. <laughs> is is the like the coolest Jewish guy on the planet. And he it's, is the dude. unambiguous hero of Afghanistan in my opinion. And this latest story from Haaretz, Afghanistan's last Jew asked for money from rescuers, decides to <laughs> remain in Kabul. This <laughs> Jewish like ch- like charity group that uh you know, um, like uh, I guess exfiltrates um, Jews who are in danger from like hot spots in the world. Were like they were like Zabulon, like you know, oh the Taliban's in control now. Like please come to Israel. And he was like, uh, yeah, okay, I got a lot of debts though. <laughs> so he was like, can you can you fill that out? And they, they wouldn't do it for him. And you know what? A lot of people were like, okay, like there's the obvious joke to make about how stereotypical this is. But Zabulon is a thousand percent right to ask for money from these assholes because like the, them doing that would be a huge PR get for him and they would trot him out and like do like media hits with him or whatever. God, is it really so much to ask that they just settle the guy's debts? His debts I mean, can't be that much. <laughs> well, it's like a few hundred dollars. Also, it's like, I'm sorry. Uh, there's, it doesn't like he has to worry about his credit score going down. He's probably just asking for money and good. He's, yeah. he's calling it debts, but at the end of the day, he just, it's like, if you're going to have me go out there to be your fucking uh, mascot, you need to fucking pay me. Cause yeah, like, you Zav- know, I, I wouldn't he- pay, my open offer is like, Zavulan, I will, like, you can live in my guest bedroom, and I will settle, whether your debts are real or not, I will help settle them, because like, I love you. <laughs> I, in that, in that, uh, that tweet thread about him, they had a story about somebody coming to see him, uh, and, and he would, and they somebody asked him if they were going to make tea for the guests and he goes, no, it's Shabbos. While well, he was uh, f- clicking on the television. <laughs> he's like, Dude. he's like going through the channels going, no, it's Shabbos. I can't make tea. Uh, did you see the thing where it was like some fucking Israeli was trying to like, he was said, um, Oh, uh, well, do you have a prayer you can say that's like a secret message for us to extract you? And, and you said Zabulon was just mumbling along with it. Cause he can't really speak Hebrew. <laughs> that, if that's not proof, that he like deserves to be the Jewish Pope. That he doesn't know Hebrew. God, he's one of us. He's one of. We need a fucking role model like him. I, I just gotta go. I gotta go to this article because there's so many good things in it. Uh, it said Afghanistan's last known remaining Jew allegedly demanded a financial payment from a group of volunteers working to facilitate his evacuation from Kabul following the Taliban takeover this week, refusing to leave when his request was rebuffed. Israeli-American businessman Moti Kahana, who has been involved in several controversial high-profile exfiltrations of Jews from Middle Eastern countries, told Haaretz on Wednesday that while the 62-year-old Zabulon Simatov initially agreed to be evacuated, he subsequently conditioned his exit on the receipt of personal financing. (laughs) I'm not paying Jews to save their own lives. I'm here to help. I'm not here to pay you to save your life, Kahana said. Simatov claimed to have some debts that he had to cover before he leaves. We're not in the business of covering debts. We're in the business of saving people's lives if they need to be saved, confirmed Rabbi Mendy Chitrick, the Istanbul chairman of the Alliance of Rabbis in Islamic States, and another participant in the aborted rescue mission. When the news about the Taliban came, he indicated that he wanted to leave and we contacted the Turkish foreign ministry and Kahana and his team. But if he didn't feel it doesn't feel under threat, then it's totally up to him. We don't feel that there is a threat to his life. Then he goes here in an interview with an Indian TV network aired on Tuesday. Simitov said that while he had the opportunity to flee to the United States, he had decided to remain behind in order to look after Afghanistan's last standing synagogue. Um, he Which goes, is like his house. Yeah. <laughs> like, no, he li- he lives there. Yeah. And then, and then uh, apparently the second to last Jew in Afghanistan, they, they both claimed ownership of the last synagogue and they both <laughs> lived in it, but drew a line down the middle and like split the house. And they were like, don't cross this line. This is my part of the synagogue and would spend all day fighting with each other. The two greatest people who've ever lived. 
There is an oh. amazing video of the, of them yelling at each other. And it's so fucking. Yeah, funny. when, the, when the, the older one goes, I will. This is supposed to be my friend. I will piss on your beard. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like the, the the older guy who's dead now is being interviewed by a TV crew, and like he's sitting there and he's giving an interview, and then you hear Zabulon just outside of frame yelling at him <laughs> and just insulting him and just going goy. Goy, triple <laughs> goy, debauch <laughs> goy. And then he's like, why do you always do this? You scare away all my customers. Why do you keep calling me a j- goy? He said, we said, why? And then he goes, why not call me a pimp or sorcerer? <laughs> <laughs> you, it, um, oh, man. I, God damn. And you know what? He doesn't have to sweat it. If he won't pay him, he doesn't have to worry about that shit because the Taliban has already imprisoned him once and they let him go because he was too annoying. Yeah. yeah. I think, like, there was, like, they talked to a Taliban guy about this and the guy, like, couldn't help it. He, like, burst into a grin. Like, everyone loves this guy. Like, even if they put him in prison, they're like, oh, it's Zabulon. And, like, uh, <laughs> there's, a, there's another article. This is from, like, uh, The Forward a couple years ago. There's a lot of good, lot of good color about him here, too. It says, uh, there is a good amount of information already available on, on Simatov, given his newsworthy title as Afghanistan's last remaining Jew. He always wears a kippah and observes the Jewish Sabbath, though he will watch television if a non-Jew has turned it on for him. He lives in <laughs> Afghanistan's last standing synagogue, which he renovated himself in the heart of Kabul's flower district every shabbat he reads torah from the bima of the old sanctuary he hates the taliban and is on a quest to reclaim a torah stolen by its interior ministry he is allegedly he allegedly charges a pretty penny or euro for interviews and it goes um everybody in the streets knows him one neighbor told faraz he is very salient and sometimes he is very choleric but we have fun with him (laughs) and this is another detail i really like when the Taliban took over of Af- Af- uh, when the Taliban took over of Af- Afghanistan in the late 1990s, Simontov went to Israel with his family, where his wife and daughters and sisters now live, but returned to Kabul after just two months. I did not want to stay there. Afghanistan is my homeland, he told Foreign <laughs> Policy. <laughs> my man, dude. dude it's like that, Yo. that's how fucking annoying Israelis are. <laughs> yeah, even the most, probably one of the most annoying guys in the world was like, ugh. Uh, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, these guys suck. Uh, when he returned, uh, uh, Simontov encountered Yitzhak Levi, nearly two decades his senior, living at the Kabul synagogue. The two did not hit it off. <laughs> they fought viciously about which of them was the rightful owner of the land, according to a 2017 Jewish telegraphic agency profile of Simontov. They moved into different wings of the synagogue. In 1998, Levy wrote to the Taliban interior minister to accuse Simontov of theft of Jewish relics. Simontov retorted by telling the Taliban that Levy ran a secret brothel where he sold alcohol, <laughs> which Levy denies. Simontov also spread rumors that Levy had converted to Islam, <laughs> which Levy denied as well. I don't talk to him. He's the devil, Simontov told the New York Times in 2002. A dog is better than him. I don't have many complaints about the... I, he goes, I don't have many complaints about the Taliban, but I have a lot of complaints about him. <laughs> <laughs> He goes, the Taliban was, uh, he goes, um, the Taliban was so annoyed by their constant fighting that they threw them in jail, but they eventually kicked them out when they continued to fight inside the prison. (laughs) He goes, the Taliban beat me a lot, Simontov told Foreign Policy. I was in prison several times because of this charlatan. He wanted to get rid of me to sell the synagogue, but thank God he was not successful. (laughs) Uh, he goes, I am a man with no fear. I will never leave Afghanistan because of the Taliban or anyone else, Simontov told Foreign Policy. When Faroz asked the Taliban official uh, about Simontov and Levi, he could not hide his grin. Yes, I remember them. They caused me a lot of problems, he said. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I, God damn it. Like this guy, like I said, hero, unambiguous hero. I am a man without fear. He says that, that, that there's nothing the Taliban that can do to me that this awful, awful old man who is lower than a dog has not already done to me. <laughs> Dude, this is a true, like, that's it. That's what, like, Judaism is supposed to be. It's like this is life or death. Yeah, like, life or death, that's in God's hands. Life or death, it's like whatever happens, happens. If it's my time, it's my time. That's up to God. Don't sweat the big things. 
the small things, you know, who <laughs> lives in the synagogue, who's like, you know, is the, accused this guy of being a fucking sorcerer and shit. Like, that's all you care about. That's what's keeping you alive. And like, that's true. That's what it's supposed to be. If I could explain Judaism to, you know, those those of our listeners who like grew up in fucking like, you know, Idaho or some shit. That's what it, it's what it's supposed to be is don't sweat the big stuff. Sweat the small stuff. <laughs> the big stuff, that's all God. That's all God. That's all in his hands. Everything else, you can be the most annoying fucking person in the world. But there's something beautiful in that, too. That's what God wants. And this is, you know, we've never really had a pope before. But this is him. Everyone, dude, everyone thinks they're David. Every Israeli who, like, gets in there and, like, fucking plays Call of Duty, uh, inflicts fucking terrible war crimes on people. I'm in the spirit of David. Every Israeli who like goes to a university to study how you can put Molly into a hamburger. I'm Solomon. I'm wise like Solomon. No, this is David. This is David. Because David was fearless because he was like, hey, God's got me. And if he doesn't, you know, that's God's hands too. But stuff like, I want to fuck my friend's wife. That's what I, like, that's what, like, all my energy that isn't being put into fearlessness and combat and all that, it's going into this. It's going into being a fucking prick in the smallest ways possible. And that's, that's life. You know, uh, King, that's what makes us human. King Solomon, you know, before he uh, famously decided, you know, who is the rightful mother of a baby, he was just like, I, I will adjudicate this matter. Uh, but first, if you could just pay a small fee to have a tour of the <laughs> temple. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> This guy, man, I he really doesn't want to leave because it's like he's got too much. It's man, he like he reminds me of my grandmother so much in so many ways. Where it's like she's like a hundred and one. She's seen all this shit, and she's like, you know, what's keeping her going? Oh, like there's some weird thing with like someone that goes to a restaurant that she knows. <laughs> you know? That keeps you going, and like I. I want, you know, in my heart, like, I, I want to get him out. I would let him live with me for however long. But I know he's not going to go because he needs to keep doing this shit. This is what his, this is what he's about. Everyone thinks they can rescue Zabulon. He doesn't need rescuing. He's doing exactly what he wants to do. He's and a beautiful I, man. And he's like, living I, his best life. Really and I, I love the, uh, like, the, uh, the, 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 the Israeli, like, rescue rangers that tried to get him out of Afghanistan. <laughs> they were, like, obviously only doing this for, like, a propaganda. Oh, yeah. Victory. And, like, all the, all the fucking, like, uh, like uh, American, like, pro-Israel groups that are, like, so worried about college campuses. And they're like, oh, hip-hop clubs are brainwashing our kids to hate Israel. It's like, they don't want, they wouldn't touch this guy with a 10-foot pole. Because, like, he, cause he has no use for Israel. He's like, no, like, I, I, I guess, unlike Israel, my people have been living in Afghanistan for a thousand years. Mm -hmm. Th this is my homeland. I don't need your fucking made up one. No Israeli could understand, like, actual courage, which this guy actually has. Pay, pay, this guy's really about man. it. Pay the man. It, dude, I wish. Is there any way to, like, cash app Zabulon? <laughs> yeah. I, like, Let's would, man. Line. <laughs> I, like, want to. Next time, if they put him in prison again, I want to put money on his books. I don't know if they have that over there. Probably not. But, like, <laughs> I literally, man, if there was a way for me to just, like, PayPal him, I would. Someone let me know. Don't, uh, everyone, everyone out there, don't pretend to be Zabulon and trick me. I'll know. <laughs> I'll ask you riddles. Uh, I it, it did say uh, the Taliban did steal uh, the, the, the copy of the Torah from the synagogue that was, like, from the 15th century. And they, I think they've, like, auctioned it off on some international black market. But Zebulon is has dedicated the rest of his life to uh, gaining back that Torah, to, to, to retain, taking it back for his yes. synagogue. I hope he succeeds. I really do. And no, Zebulon, you don't need my blessing. We both know whatever happens is in God's hands, but we love you. And you are our Pope. 